Welcome to this Excel video. This is part one of a series where I'm going to look at the creation of basic reports from a data set. In this first video, I'm going to use a body composition data set and perform a simple VLOOKUP to extract the information for a given athlete. Also in this video, I'm going to repeat that process using the Excel table format. The process is the same, but the formulas look a lot different, so I'm just going to repeat myself just so you can see the differences. First thing, I'm going to create an extra sheet, and I'm going to call it Report. What I'm looking to create is a situation where a name can be selected from a drop-down list, and the report can populate itself. So to have a drop-down list, we need to refer to a range of data. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to select these names, go up to the name box, and call it list names. Now over on the report sheet, I can click data, data validation, and then list. Now inside the source box, if I'm on a PC, I can hit F3 and a little window pops up with any named ranges that I have created. So I could just double click that and it would populate the source box for me. If I was on a Mac, I would simply be typing list names. And now I can now choose the name that I want. Because this is a little bit narrow, there's a few things I could do. I could merge the cell and make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to do that now, starting from the cell where the data validation list is in, which is A3. I'm going to drag across to about D3. And on the Home tab, choose Merge Cells. And to make sure people know that this is what they can select from, I have a theme where I put a border around the outside. I shade it gold. And I've got a keyboard shortcut because I do this all the time that puts a little arrow and the word select next to it. So now people won't be confused as to what they're supposed to do in this particular box. To make my report simpler to build, I'm going to copy all of the column headings and pull them across. If we decide that we don't want all of this information, or we don't want it all in one place, then we can move it around. And so let's create a little layout for a table. I'm going to pull the skin folds out, and put them down here, and have the summary variables up at top. So we've now got two layers in our table, and that allows us to Possibly just expand this out a little bit to make it a little bit easier to read and look at. So what my task now is, is to populate all of these cells with data based upon our selection of the top here. So how might we do that? Well, the first step that we could and should do is to go back to our range select this entire table. I can do that by typing Control shift 8 That selects the active range. You can see if I scroll down that it's selected everything inside this table. In the name box again, I'm going to type table SF data for skinfold data. So I've now created a named range. And I can refer to that named range now moving forward. Something that's also helpful for us when we're learning is we know that name is column one, date column two, position column three. So if I drag that across, I get some numbers. And what I'm going to do is copy them across here and paste it underneath. And that's going to help me out. 
You can delete them later, but for now that's going to be useful. Back to the range. I'm going to paste them there as well. And finally, I'm going to copy those column numbers for the remaining variables. Now, I definitely don't need to do that. It's just going to help explain the process that we need to go through. So we are going to use the VLOOKUP formula. And to do so, we need a target, if you like. Our target is the athlete name. The target always needs to be in column one of the table. We need a range, and we need a column number. So let's go and build our VLOOKUP on the basis of that, because we know all of those things now. If I start typing VLOOKUP, hit the tab, it takes us inside the first bracket. What is our lookup value? I described it earlier as a target. It makes it a little bit easier to understand what you need to put in here. Our target is the athlete name, which is an A3. If I hit F4, I should be able to copy this formula across. Where do we need to look up this athlete name? Well, we need to look it up in a table. that we have called table SF data. We just named that a few seconds ago. What column do we need? Well, I've put that in here just to help us out. So I know that date is column two. The only thing that I haven't talked about so far is this final variable range lookup type. We always want to do an exact match so that we only look up this athlete's name. And that's it. When we hit enter, we're going to get a funny looking result. That's because it hasn't been formatted correctly. If I simply go to short date, then we're good to go. If I drag this across, I can go into the formula under position and simply update this to 3. Update this one to 4. And you get the picture. I now just need to modify the format. So body weight, LMI, percent fat, lean mass. Let's just put them as a number and see if we're happy with that. Make it central. That looks okay to me. I would probably decrease down to one decimal place for everything other than LMI where I might go up to two. So we've now populated that top row, and just to check it out, I'm going to select a different athlete. And we can see that it all updates, so that was pretty easy. Now let's select one of the formula. Select the body weight one, that way we don't have to modify the format. Paste it into tricep. Now we know tricep is number six. Drag that all the way across and then one at a time, just update that. So there we are, I've done those updates. I'm going to delete our column helpers because I don't need them anymore. Probably not necessary particularly, but the report's looking pretty bare, so Add a little chart there, put a little title on, perhaps a data label, format the axis. I would personally take away the decimal place on the axis. And I think we're looking all right. Again, I'm not trying to make the perfect report, I'm just trying to illustrate the process of looking up. Let's pick a different athlete. The table changes and the chart updates. And so all we had to do was figure out one formula, a simple VLOOKUP, and it was able to extract all of these measurements into a table that we could have formatted any way we liked. And then obviously you can produce other information from that.
in subsequent videos we'll look at adding complexity to this particular table such as re referencing against other data sets and putting some aggregated data in there too such as position averages and team averages and so on but for now the process of extracting is the focus bit of formatting turn off the grid lines on the view tab and there we are we've got a basic report that is individualized based upon selecting the athlete's name let's repeat that process again first thing we do is go to the sheet called table now this isn't a table yet I need to click on a cell inside the data on the insert tab click on table I'm going to call this TBL SF data so we've got one report sheet I'm going to make a copy of it I'm just going to rename it as report TBL just to note that it's being referred to in the table data set rather than the range data set delete out all of that information there and let's get started again on rebuilding using VLOOKUP when we're working with tables we can go about it in two ways the first way is VLOOKUP we've already had a look at that and the second way is INDEX INDEX requires us to specify the range a column and a row number I want to do the first one which is date I want to do that with VLOOKUP and we'll see that it's not really any different we want to look up the same thing as before we've got a slightly different table name but it's still column 2 and we still want to do an exact match lookup and so there's nothing particularly different about that there's no reason why using a table format would be any better or worse and if I drag that across once again I'd just be required to go through and update the column number so I'm going to make them yellow and make that yellow just to indicate that I've done it with the VLOOKUP let's take advantage of the situation to learn a new formula which is INDEX what are we trying to look up? we are trying to look up something in the table SF data if I hit the square bracket now it brings up all my column headings and what I'm hoping to extract is training phase How do I know the row number? I know the row number by using a function called match. Just like VLOOKUP, I need to match the selected athlete name. Where do I want to match it in? Column 1 of the table, which is called athlete name. And so that's our formula for index. Our range, we simply specify where we want the answer to come from. We don't have to specify the column because that's already been done. All we have to tell it is the row number, which we can get by matching the name to find out whereabouts in the list Amy Johnson is. So that's picked up pre-season, and we can copy that and paste it. Important to note that I didn't drag that across. If I had dragged that across, field names in these square brackets would have also dragged across and given us something that we didn't want. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to type body weight. As soon as I start typing it, guesses what I want and fills it in for me. As previously, just update that number format and I should be good to go quick check before I move on to that second row yep everything is updating just fine 
Now it comes down to the second part of the table. Copy our formula down, paste it in there. I'm going to do something a little bit different. And that is, when it comes to matching our name, I'm going to put a second set of brackets at the beginning, and then a colon. I'm going to select the athlete name field a second time. So if you just take a careful look at that, we're trying to match the name in A3 in the column athlete name. And because I've put it in there twice, when I drag the field across, it's not going to update. What I do need to update is that we're looking for skin fold triceps. If I now drag this across, what it's going to do is update the first field, which is the skin fold, but not the second field, which is athlete name. So it's a little strange Microsoft table feature that if you put the name twice with a colon in between and double brackets around the outside, it will lock that range in place. This allows you to drag it to the right and not have it update. And so there we go, we've got a green there. So I updated these ones with green and the other one with yellow. Choose a different name, everything updates and looks good. So that was a quick run through the process of a simple extraction, pulling out basic data from a data set. Our data set was very small, it only had about 40 rows. But as long as you can identify the athlete name, this could have 10,000 rows and that process would work fine. You have to do things a little bit differently when you have multiple records for each athlete. It's not quite as simple as the process I just demonstrated, but we'll have a look at that in the next video and we can build on that over the subsequent ones. See you soon.